I mean, this is going to be probably the biggest story for a while is with Drew Locke coming back to Kansas City from the area, from Lee Summit. Um, and he said earlier this week he enjoys putting on the Dark Vader mask, and I think that's awesome. Uh, as a Mizzou fan, it kind of makes me quiver a little bit. It was one of those picks when I saw him go to the Broncos a little upset because I feel kind of dirty as someone who covers the Chiefs wanting to see Drew Locke do well. So what do you think these games kind of mean to Drew? Well, I think they're very important emotionally for Drew Locke. Because, you know, his immediate family, his, his mom and dad and his sister, you know, they've all flipped and, and they're sporting the orange and blue and they're all yeah. about the Broncos. But Drew Locke grew up in a very devoted and fanatical Chiefs family. And so, so many of his cousins and his uncles, I mean, they're still, it, anyone who's a fan of a team, it's hard to just sever that emotional connection that you have. And so for Drew Locke, of course, he's a professional and it's a different matter it's the Denver Broncos who are signing his checks. So when he talks about, you know, putting on the villain mask and putting on Darth Vader mask and going out there and embracing the dark side, I think for him, you know, he's really looking at it more from just kind of the emotional family dynamic aspect where he's got this group of people that he, you know, he's bound to from blood and, and uh, you know, being thicker than water and they all love the chiefs. And he, if he gets his way and can finally lead the Broncos to a win over the chiefs for the first time since week two, 2015, I think it's very important to him. I don't think the, the uh, I don't think, what's a good word for it? I don't think the law of averages is lost on him in terms of, you know, it's been a long time since the Broncos beat the Chiefs. I mean, I've been following the Denver Broncos since I was knee high to a grasshopper back in the 80s. <laughs> I can think of no other reign. And I'm not, you know, one of these uh, historical statisticians that can just pull mm-hmm. out this and that off the top of my head but nine straight wins for the chiefs. And I can't even think for the Broncos. I know, you know, they had a hard time beating Peyton Manning during that reign all the way up until that second meeting in 2015, when he threw all those picks. And that was the game in which, you know, he got hurt and, you know, the next game enter Brock Osweiler, you know, but that was maybe two or three year window. We're talking now half a decade in which the chiefs have, have yet to lose to the Broncos. So I think for Drew Locke, it's very, very important. It would mean a lot emotionally and just kind of, you know, also, it would really there. I'd be lying to you if I didn't admit that there's a, I would say it's a minority of Broncos fans, but there is a minority of Broncos fans who now question Drew Locke as is he the answer long term? And not so much because of anything he has or hasn't done on the field, but more so just because, you know, two years now, two serious injuries that have cost him time. They worry that is this a guy that's going to be, you know, compromised because of his health, or is this a guy that can overcome those things? A win against the Chiefs, one week removed from a win over the Patriots. Nine point dogs, of course, going into New England, they win that game. I think it would go a long way towards solving that. So it's very important for Drew Locke in particular. You bring up uh, something that I wanted to talk about next. Do you think people are kind of too harsh on Drew Locke? I saw some people on Twitter kind of go at him for his stat line against the Patriots, but they did have three big drops that could have really totally changed his stat line. Four, four big four. Drops. Yeah. I mean, three were in the end zone. The fourth one was a was a 40-yard gain, and it was put right on the numbers against arguably the number one corner in the game, mm-hmm. Stephon Gilmore, in which the receiver, Deshaun Hamilton, had more than one step on his guy. Locke dropped it right in the bucket, If he and it was in stride. If he catches yeah. that, there's always a chance Gilmore can shoestring him and, and bring him down, but there's a probably a better than 50-50 chance that Hamilton goes into the end zone. And so, yeah, he I'll tell you this. Drew Locke was dropping dimes. Anyone who watched that game against the Patriots right. early on, the first two, three quarters, actually, he was dropping dimes. His receivers just let him down, and it's no big surprise why. It's all a young group of guys, inexperienced. And he sat on the sideline for the better part of a month of real time. Chemistry was off. The juice was off. The whole nine yards. So I understand why things weren't exactly firing on all cylinders, but where it went off the rails and why he's received so much criticism was – he had really quarterbacked a good game. He got the Broncos out in front of a multi-score lead on, you know, on the Patriots at Gillette. Mm-hmm. And then a series of three plays. It starts with a muffed snap that he that was his fault. He took accountability for. He yeah. fell on it. But that once muffed snap seemed to just kind of discombobulate him. Next mm-hmm. play is on third down. He miscommunicates with the receiver. The receiver's running a nine route. He throws the back shoulder because it's a blitz. It's picked off. And then literally the very next snap, when they get the ball back, he throws an ill-advised pick into double coverage. And, you know, granted, the Patriots guy made a phenomenal play to, to intercept that. But yeah. he, on one hand, went to great length to garner a lot of love and respect and props from Broncos fans and media people alike, mm-hmm. only to then have everything kind of come into question with 
that many boneheaded plays in such a short amount of time. And if it weren't for an inspired kind of collective performance from the defense, we could be seeing in a totally different story going into to week seven. 